All right, guys, so we are on Fraser Island. This is uh, probably just outside Cathedral's Cathedral Beach. Um, I thought I'd do another walk around for you of the next super tour we got. So we've gone for a different one this time. Last time we had the Ram, uh, sorry, last time we had the Toyota Land Cruiser 200 series. This time we've gone for the Ram 2500, once again through Patriot Campers. Um, and the reason I've gone back to them is because the service, the quality, just everything with that 200 that I had last time was just second to none. So they've bought my business again and this time they've done a really good job. So I'll take you on a bit of a walk around. I know Justin's already done one of these. Um, if you Google, if you look under YouTube, I think they call it um, the Ram 2500. Could it be the Land Cruiser Killer? Something along those lines. Look, it's not. It is, a, it is definitely, as Justin puts it, it is a new kid on the block. Um, having had both spec'd up nearly exactly the same, um, there's horses for courses and, and I'll tell you about this one the good things but I'll also tell you about some of the limitations so it is a bit dirty I've just taken it I've given it a bit of a hose just to get some of the sand and salt water off um, so we'll start at the front so we've gone for the this one's got the TJM bar you've got the intent um, sorry worn 16 pound winch at the front your x-ray vision lights you've also got the shoulder lights there as well and the roof bar I just love the matte black I think it looks awesome now this one's got 35s on it might have been one of my limitations that I found yesterday trying to get back through Nagala rocks um, but we'll come to that things I love about it just little things so you open the steps you know you've got the amp steps come out um, pretty similar to the other one you've got your awning there at the top that's a 180 degree awning I've just put on the rhino bar at the top I've just put a um, bit of PVC I've sprayed black um, just put my fishing rods up in there I've also got because it's just me I'm about to go up the Cape so I've just got an Alu cab gen 3 rooftop tent and they're fantastic I'd highly recommend those um, extremely comfortable extremely long I'm about six foot maybe a bit under um, but even once I'm stretched out you can't feel the end of it uh, the feet don't touch the end of it a um, bit of a downside about this is look you've obviously got your diesel but you've also got AdBlue and um, the AdBlue I think I've done about 6,000 K's in this and I haven't even put a, a drop of AdBlue in it but the minute I got on the island put it in four-wheel drive towing a X1 um, it's certainly the needle moved down a little bit same as the last video you've got ample storage um, just storage pockets everywhere so I'm trying to close this as I'm doing this one-handed and we just keep tire repair kits winch handles you got the same famous drawer at the back I think my last video I had this out because I had some dividers put in it but um, this time it's all there and They've actually changed the design, just little things like I think this might have had ball bearings in it before which tend to get clogged up with that red dust up the north end. Um, this one, you know, we've been bogged in it, we've had it in red dirt and it's just perfect. Uh, Xeon winch at the back, I think that's a 12. They've gone for the method wheels on this one as well. You've got the DO35 hitch on the back for the X1. Sitting at about 600 mil high, um, and once again you got your ARB inflator there at the back, tucked in under there. Sorry, guys, I'm not really coordinated at talking and walking and doing this all at the same time, so just bear with me. Got the Mickey Thompson all terrains on the methods. Um, another pocket there, pretty much the same as the other side. I've just put a Rhino shovel on there as well which came in pretty handy yesterday. Um, and once again, same when you open the doors on this side, they just come out and help you get on board. Um, you can see my fender's a bit bent yesterday, trying to squeeze through some of those rocks um, at Nagala. So I'll have to get that sorted. All right, so to the canopy, it's a little bit different to the last one. So the last one, you remember, we had two boxes. We had the sort of the utility box here, and we had a dog box here, which had the dog grids on it didn't really suit my style of 
camping. So this one's got a three quarter box and it is so much better. Just the little things and I'll go through them. Um, first of all, when you open it, all the lights come on. There must be on sort of a, a pressure switch or something. They just turn on and off. I'm not too technical, so whatever that might be. I'll open up the other side just so we can see through. Sorry, she's very dirty. All right. So you can just see you've got ample storage through there. Um, there's the telescopic ladder for the rooftop tent, solar panels. On this side, this is once again the brains, pretty much the same as my last video. Just keep my Makita here for charging, laptops, drones, it's all a bit of a mess, but uh, that's what camping is about. Uh, once again, you've got all your sockets there, you've got, I mean, your, um, what do you call them? High amp fuses, whatever they're called. Your mains. Your BMS, your inverter. Once again, BMS 30. I love the BMS. I think they're just so easy to use. Actually, we should be seeing some power going, unless it's full. So, it's got 150 amp hour, sorry, maybe 100 amp hour, I'm not sure, uh, lithium battery. Um, it's currently on 96%, one hour till flat, probably because the fridge is running, the lights are on, and I've got the inverter on. You can see the lights on the inverter there, and I'm charging two laptops, a drone, so if we have a look here, you can see it's putting in about 18.4 volts from the sun, still a bit from the car. There you go, we're, there's not a whole heap of sun out because it's afternoon, so we're pulling about 8 amps um, and putting bugger all in from the sun. But you can plug in an additional solar, which I think I said in my last video as well, and I just keep that extra solar panel here. I just went with the hardcore. Your boys coming down the beach. Um, obviously, we did a bit of recovery yesterday, so there's a bit of recovery stuff still hasn't been put away. Big drawers, same as last time, that's pretty deep. Um, we use this a bit sometimes. We're staying at cathedrals this time because we've got some young kids with us, so it's, obviously, it's a dingo fenced um, campsite, so we can plug into 240 if we needed to. Uh, you got your water at the side again so this holds I couldn't tell you probably I'm going to guess about a hundred litres or so um, and then you got your tap around the back I don't think there's any water in it but yeah, you got a tap there it's turned off at the moment um, just the chassis rails on these things it's so big so the reason we got this this over the 200 series and don't get me wrong I think 200 series are the bees knees especially off-road um, but we do a lot of towing uh, a blacktop towing a lot of caravanning you know, we've got a three and a half ton caravan. We've just had that regraded to 4.2 with bigger DO45, bigger chains. Um, so for us, that's why we went for the Ram. But look, I did feel its limitations yesterday when we're going up through Nagala. This is about 4.8, 4.7 ton as it sits there today with the rooftop tent. You know, so it's a lot of car on some 35s. Uh, and that definitely proved a bit difficult for us. Um, it's had a two inch lift on the 35s. I love that, just it was very subtle. Last time I went for the full matte black, this time we've just gone for very subtle tones. The bonnet's a good example of that. Sorry about the reflection on myself. You can just see they've just done that little matte black with the vents there. It just looks tough. And we've gone the two aerials again, the same as the last one. You got your UHF and your Telstra repeater. Cell fire, now they might be a bit close together, but do you know what, everyone that said that to me when I put them on there, I haven't had a single problem with either, so whatever it is, it's working. Um, inside, I'll look in the back. So I've just got the, obviously I've got a baby, so we've got a baby seat there. Got the MSA cargo on both sides, but we've got the one that with the table attachment, which is really handy for her, so she can sit there, watch her movies, do all those kind of things. Oh, actually, I actually didn't show you the fridge on this side. So this time we've gone for an upright fridge. Um, I actually prefer it. I was getting sick of pulling that other fridge out, taking the case off and then opening it. This one, even the wife prefers it. It's just easier. I'd say it's probably somewhere between 60 and 80 litres. What does it say out there? Um, so I'm just trying to read it. 81 litres, there you go. CRX 1080. Yeah, it's good. Been really happy with it. 
it does I think it chews through a little bit more juice but you're driving every other day so you, I've never really dropped below 80% um, we'll go around the driver's side I'll show you inside and it's just luxury it's so good I mean I'm not a massive bloke but a couple of the boys we're with are pretty decent units and you know they can sit in here really comfortable seats you know, full leather this is the Laramie um, you got heated and ventilated seats uh, you got a heated steering wheel just jump in and see if I can get rid of the reflection all right so um, good thing about this as well you got all your controls so you can run your heated seats vented seats different cameras so I think you can Oh, maybe you have the engine started. You got all your cameras. So you've got the back camera, but you've also got the cargo camera, which is obviously just looking straight at the box on the back. So that would be for looking at all the stuff in your tray if you had that option. So for anyone else who's going for a RAM. Um, I've just got the little safety day of tyre pressure system here. I think we're running about 20s all around. It's a bit... been driving for a little while, so maybe a bit warm. Um, this HEMA HX1 has been an absolute lifesaver for us. So you can put it in drive mode for normal highway stuff, you know, going to find somewhere. But the explore mode is basically your HEMA map. I'm trying to get my reflection out of it. So you can see we're on Cathedral Beach now. So it's, you use it like an Android or an iPhone. You can basically zoom out. So you can see where that blue square is. That's basically because what I've done is I've... I'd map, it still has one, but it just gives you all the little tracks. So you might zoom in. Actually, you can see yesterday. So I went over to Kingfisher yesterday because I had to get a new hydraulic hose because I, I broke it yesterday. Um, that was my own fault. That wasn't the car's fault. That was just me being an idiot. But you can sort of see all the maps, the detail. You can see where you've been. Um, we went over to Kingfisher Bay. Yeah, just a great little unit. You know what, you probably don't use it much, but when you need it, it's there, and you want it, You can tell someone there's a turn off coming, you're not looking at maps all the time, so that's been really good. Um, what else is there to tell you about it? So you've got your UHF radio, it's just that, there's no base unit, it's just a single handle. This is your second fuel tank. So you've got your main fuel tank, obviously, over here. When that starts to run down, you press that, there's a little transfer pump that then pumps it through. Um, and then you've also got your red arc uh, for your towing, your brake towing. It does have its own tow haul system, but I think they might have bypassed that. So what I normally do when I drive this, I usually chuck on the exhaust brakes. So that means that any time you take your foot off the accelerator, the exhaust brake comes on, you press it again, and then it goes into automatic mode. And that's basically once you, we're doing about at least 40 k's an hour. If you tap the brake, you guys get that nice sound. Um, obviously, if you're towing and hauling, which we do a bit, just um, changes the gear ratios as far as I'm aware. Maybe a few other things. Definitely gives you a bit more loud exhaust brakes as well. Two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, your, uh, your four-wheel drive low. Um, and actually, I didn't show this in the last video, but this is actually a needy unit that they've got this time. So it looks like it's called a Switch Pro. You can turn your roof lights on, obviously, if you've got your high beams on. Um, you get your front and rear diff lockers. It's got uh, diff breathers as well, and your uh, air compressor. Down here, you've got a little power point. So I'm not sure how big the inverter would be, but I'm, it's just for basic stuff. So charging, you know, maybe a laptop. Um, I haven't even used it. It's not really ideal where it is. Um, sorry, mate. Let's talk about the reflection. You got your secondary seat there as well so that's your bench seat the middle seat so that obviously just folds up i won't do it now because all the money and everything will fall out of it um and in the back this is what i love about it when i bought this car to drive it back from queensland to melbourne and i didn't really think about where i was going to sleep as a roof tent and stuff so basically all i did was i'll try and zoom out a little bit see if i can show this a bit better basically what i did is you just lift this up this folds out, Oops, sorry, set the legs up. I think Justin had talked about this in his video as well, but until you see it, that's dead flat. So I just did that seat as well, 
put a mattress in here, sleeping bag, uh, and I was done. So that's been really handy. But we just use it for storage now. We don't even put these seats down. Um, you can open the rear window there if you've got a dog or something and you want to, there's no canopy on the back. Otherwise, guys, that's pretty much it. That's the Ram 2500. There's all these other little things, you know, big fuel tanks, water tanks, you know, two inch lift, everything else they do, which is fantastic. That's it. We're really happy with it. It's been a great car. Um, but you know what? Understanding of its limitations as well. So enjoy, guys. If you want any more info about it or if I've missed something and you want to ask a question, just leave a comment below and I'm usually trying to get back to you within a day or two. Otherwise, enjoy. Cheers, guys.